Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna dive into problem solving with motion through sketching. Like any good design process, you start from the basics. Sketching on paper, lo-fi wireframes, and you refine that till you get to your high fidelity designs. Motion is no different. You could dive into a tool like After Effects, but it's such a beast of a tool and it really slows down that ideation process. So let's dive in. So here we have the Spotify app and you can see that if maybe we were to tap here, we'd get into this screen here where we're looking at uh, maybe an album or something. And we have an opportunity here to really design what is this transition, what does this motion look like as we go from state A over here to state B over here. One way you could think about this is say you tap on this album right there and this thing just slides in. But that misses a lot of opportunities for communicating what is happening to the user. So a better way to think about this is triggers and responses. So a user has tapped right here, and that has then made this thing appear. And so how can we leverage that information of knowing like, hey, someone has tapped here, and that has caused something to happen. And so it's helpful to think about the same way that you design a page and you have a hierarchy in mind of this is the most important, and then it just kind of goes down from there. You also have a hierarchy of motion. So what was the first thing that happened and what is the last thing that should happen based off of what's important to the user? So in this instance, we can start thinking about like, okay, this is the first thing that happened. Their eyes are on this album art is on this, the title. So maybe this thing should be the first thing that moves and maybe this just moves straight into here. And so already, if that was the only thing that happened, we have like a better experience than just sliding over the other screen because we've communicated to the user, hey, you've tapped on this, and this thing is persistent between both screens. So we're gonna show you that that is the focus of your next screen. One thing that's super helpful as we're starting to annotate what type of motion is going to be happening is to start developing your own little language of how do you annotate things. So for example, if we want something to maybe move to the right, maybe we say like, hey, here's the object, and it moves to the right. Maybe we want to show something expanding. So we have this image here and we say maybe there are four arrows on all corners showing like, hey, this thing is going to scale up. And then we could even show like, hey, this is the state A and this is state B. Um, and that is like what goes together. We could even show how does something scale down. So we have this and then we have maybe arrows on the inside. Or even you could have a box and have arrows on the outside showing, hey, this thing is going to be shrinking and scaling down. How about if we wanted to show something maybe fading away? Um, maybe we do that by having a few different things and we say the first one's full, you can see it fully, and the next one maybe we erase a little bit, and the next one we maybe erase a little bit more, something like that. Um, and we can capture that all in like a box saying like, hey, this is what's gonna happen over time. Whatever your annotations are, it's just important to start developing that visual language for your own annotations so that you're capturing your notes in a logical way that's easy for you to understand as you're going through and maybe getting to storyboarding or jumping into After Effects to actually animate the thing. What's great then to start thinking about is as you're looking at state A and state B, what is the same, what is new, and what is going away? And so we've already identified that this image here is the same as this image here. And so we can say that that is something that is persistent across both states. We can also see that, okay, this name here is going to be over here and this name here is over there. We can see that we have a heart here and we can move that down there. And right now I'm just starting to annotate the screen. I just need to make mental notes of what is staying the same so I know what actually needs to move. What is being removed so I know like what is less important in the experience. Um, and then what are new things uh, like this play button here that maybe we need to draw extra focus to as we are working on this piece of motion. So I'm just gonna go through and start annotating some things that I see that are different, that are new and all those sorts of things. So we can also see that this entire header area kind of just goes away. So I'm gonna scribble that out. All of this down here gets removed. And then we have some new text here. We have some new iconography here. And then we have this whole thing of all of the tracks in the album. And then also this back arrow there. So as you can tell, this looks like a big old mess of just marks and sketches. And that is okay, because during the sketching phase, this is for your eyes only. It is a way for you to start problem solving, a way for you to start thinking on paper, uh, on a screen, so that you're able to problem solve better. What then is also helpful to think of is, okay, the user has just tapped on this album, 
and now we see all of the we see the giant album art we see all the tracks in this album and then we have this play button as well let's try to think and get into our users mindset of what would be the logical next step in this flow we're not on the spotify design team so we don't know exactly what is like the business goals and the design goals within this app but we can assume from the user's perspective that they're tapping on this album they want to either listen to the album or they want to listen to something specific within the album and so those are probably the two highest priority next steps for the user. And also because the design really emphasizes that play button, we can assume that this is kind of our star next step. We're gonna make a note of that because when we actually get into animating this, that's going to be the thing that happens last because whatever motion happens last is where we are guiding our viewer's eye to. And so our the viewer's eye will rest on that last thing that they need to do, which should be their next step. Now that we've annotated what's new, what's the same, and what's going away. Let's start thinking about how could things move in a logical way. And so we've already started getting to that here where we're talking about um, this specific image being enlarged and taking up this space over here. Let's dive into some of the other parts of this experience. We could start this by focusing on the first screen and we can say, okay, maybe this um, section here kind of goes up and then disappears. We could say, this section here maybe goes down and disappears. And so we kind of have a natural, so this is our image here, we have like a natural expansion that pushes everything out of the way. Um, and that kind of momentum created by that image kind of helps everything kind of follow through as it's expanding. So that's a really nice moment that we've discovered there. We also see that this little heart thing needs to get from all the way here to all the way down there. As this transition is happening, it's probably going to happen over maybe 300 milliseconds. It's going to be very, very quick. And so we don't want anything that's very bespoke or super distracting for the user. We want to really give them feedback of you tapped on this album and then focus, hey, here is the play button. And so that's our focus. And so everything else kind of needs to come in and go away in the most logical, seamless way possible that we don't draw extra attention to those things. If we already have this natural momentum being built by this image expanding and things being pushed up and things being pushed down, Let's see how that manifests in this area on the state B. So one great way is that we could bring these tracks in by actually going down and maybe they're fading in one at a time. Um, and maybe we can show that by doing something like this. If we switch to our eraser, we'd say like this is really hard to see and this is a little bit better. And so maybe they're coming in one at a time and it's this first one and then second one, then third one. And they're kind of like fading in as, we're, as it's going down. We also have this heart over here um, that we need to get over here. And we could just say, hey, this heart is here and we're gonna just bring it all the way down across the screen and, and plop it where it needs to go. However, that doesn't really follow this natural momentum that we have here as things are going up and things are going down. And it would, it would in introduce some diagonal motion, which we don't really need in here. And the heart button is not the next step for the user. And so we don't wanna draw so much attention to it. Because we have this natural downward motion, maybe we take this little heart thing and we start moving it down. And as it's moving down, it fades out. I'm just gonna make a little annotation there. And maybe as it fades out in state A, and it has the same amount of motion and it fades in in state B uh, right here. Since we have that motion, maybe we just duplicate that motion across all of these little icons that we have here. So as you can tell right now, things are getting super messy and I'm drawing over old drawings and trying to emphasize things that I've already emphasized and things are just getting harder and harder to understand. How do we really show this in a more logical, easy to follow way? So I have here just a very simple mobile storyboarding template. And I'm going to use this to start actually frame by frame storyboarding what is the motion going to be from going from state A to state B based off of some of those annotations that we created earlier. So I'm going to focus first on the image that we have here where we're trying to scale it up. We have it here on the left side and it's kind of this thing like that. And we're just going to show, hey, this thing starts to get bigger and it starts moving to the center and it starts getting bigger. And now this is maybe our like final frame right here. Okay, so over four frames, we move it from this position all the way up here. There's space here to write if you want to be like, hey, this is state A and this is state B. And we can say like it scales up. 
So now let's take a look back and see what else we want to integrate. So now we have maybe the text as well. We have the text here. And how do we actually want to deal with that, right? Like we annotated it. We know that there's going to be a natural motion of being pushed upwards and being pushed downwards. And so how do we want that text to come in? We could actually just take this and move it and scale it. But that may be too much motion and it may be too distracting because it's not the focus of where we want our user looking next, which is going to be this play button. So maybe if we start looking at it and we say, maybe actually that thing follows everything else, which is just going to be going down and fading out. So let's show that here. So we can show like maybe it moved down a little bit and maybe it's a little bit heavy erased and it's starting to fade out really, really strongly. And then in here we can show, hey, maybe these two lines are right here. Maybe they're a little bunched up together because they're still going to be moving downwards and they're still super fading. So we can say that that at this point, things are just gone. This line here, it doesn't exist in this kind of like in-between state here, but then on this third frame, it starts to reappear a little bit. And on this final state B frame, we can see it is where it needs to be, um, which is not there. It's actually over here. So if we were to just animate that, we can see this image is gonna scale up, this text is gonna go down and it's gonna fade out, and then it's still gonna be moving down while it fades in. And let's go ahead and fix this as well. And sometimes it's helpful to put annotations right on your storyboard as well. So let's go and see what else we have. So we also have the heart, and we're gonna say that that's probably going to follow the same pattern. So we have the heart, and that's also going to be a little bit faded out and it's going to be fading in right here and it will be fully there on the next frame as you can see these sketches are nothing fancy whatsoever purely the goal of this is to get my ideas down somewhere tangible so that i don't waste time in after effect all right now let's try to see how do we how are we going to get all of this content off the screen so let's go back up here. And I think we're just going to treat that the same way as well. So we're just going to treat this just as like a big box. And we're just going to say this stuff is going to be moving down and fading out. And so we're going to show that it's moving down and fading out. But then when we get here, we know that we have all of these tracks in the album. And so let's go ahead and start fading those in. And so we will see that the first one will start to fade in. The first one will start fading in. And maybe we could even show this a little bit because, and then it will be fully there, but the next one is still going to be fading in maybe a little bit. And then the one after that, even a little bit more. And it could have been helpful maybe for me to have another frame. So let's go ahead and basically make this as our final uh, frame here. Because I think there's a little bit more intricacy that I want to show of some offsetting and uh, sequencing of how things are fading in and fading out. And then let's also show this like music and podcast, how that's going to go away. And so we can represent that as just like two lines up here and we can show that those things are gonna move up and fade out. And so those are gonna be fading out and here they're completely gone and they don't come back at all. We also know we have this persistent nav bar here on the bottom. Since it doesn't change, it's just persistent. As far as its location and size and everything, nothing needs to happen with that. If it were to move, it would be more distracting than helpful. What else are we missing? This is kind of the playlist and album. Artists and albums are kind of like grouped in with this music and podcast. So they're all just going to move up and they're all going to fade out. Um, we've already taken care of this section that it's going to like move down and fade out. We have our tracks coming in. I think we have our icons. Let's add those in as well. So those would come in in tandem with these. And so maybe we can even show a little bit more of offset uh, and sequencing that motion a little bit more, showing that these are still fading in a little bit. And then in this final one, we have 
those there. And then very last is the play button. So, so far we have this big expansion of the image. It's scaling up right here and everything is, is fading in in kind of a downwards motion going from top to bottom and then going from opacity zero to 100. But we haven't really addressed the play button yet. So one way we could do that, we could just say, hey, this thing just fades in along with everything else as it's going down from top to bottom. However, that would then land our eyes on the last thing, which would end up being one of these tracks here at the bottom. And that's not supposed to be our focus. So one way that we could bring focus is by contrasting the motion that's happening. And so everything is moving down and here things are moving up as they're exiting, but for the most part, it's expanding and everything is moving down. And so if we had this play button go up, maybe towards the tail end of this transition, that would bring a lot of contrast because it's moving in the complete opposite direction of everything else. But if we pop it up, that will really draw the user's eye right to this button and they would know like, oh, that is the next thing that I need to tap on. So let's start seeing how we can show that here. There's another frame because it kind of has a follow through motion. And so maybe it takes slightly longer than everything else. And that's okay because it's the last thing that we are supposed to be looking at. And so you can see everything is fading in going downwards, but then this one play button goes up and you can even see as you scan your eye through this piece, you can see like, oh, my focus is actually on this play button that is moving in the opposite direction. So now we have a pretty decent storyboard of how we want this transition to happen. At this point, we could then just say, hey, we're done with sketching. Let's just go into After Effects and start moving layers around and animating this thing. Or you could refine your storyboard a little bit further. It doesn't need to be high fidelity sketches because we have the actual designs already made that we just are going to drop into After Effects when that time comes. But more so, how do we refine the actual motion. So we're already working on this assumption that this image here is scaling up as it's moving towards the center. And so because of that, everything is following this natural order of moving down and fading in. That is one way of infinite ways that we could do this transition. And so now, since we've gotten our first idea out, we can then start working on a second idea, or maybe there's a portion of this specific animation that we're not so sure about. So maybe we're, maybe we're thinking about this uh, play button that we have there. So then you could dive in and start sketching out what are other possible ways that this play button could come in and draw attention to itself. So one way we could say is that maybe it starts off as like a small thing and maybe it gets a little bit bigger and maybe it gets really big and it kind of has like an overshoot and then comes back down to the normal play button. We can say because of that increase in scale, there's going to be contrast and focus on that specific element. Through this sketching process, we were really able to explore ideas and really nail down a pretty good transition of going from state A to state B in this Spotify context. And we haven't even had to touch any type of animation tool yet. So not knowing a tool like After Effects is not a barrier to start thinking about how to solve problems with motion. You can do that just by sketching things out and starting to consider how does motion impact my experience and how can it enhance the communication. Next, we can take these sketches and actually turn them into a small animatic to actually see these things move frame by frame. Let's jump into Figma. I've already brought in the image here in Figma and let's go ahead and just quickly crop all of these individual frames so that we can get them into After Effects. And if I hold Command and I just change the bounding box that will actually crop this image. And I know I have one, two, three, four, five, six total. And then I can just command double click and hold shift and move it over. You can then export these individually as PNGs. Instead, I'll use AEUX to get everything over to After Effects. And so if I select all my images, and paste them inside of here and just make sure they're all centered. I'll select this and send it all over to After Effects. Now all of my images are here inside of After Effects as you can see. We will just go ahead and crop all of these 
images to take two frames. And now let's just offset all these images. So if I go to the end and hit the left bracket for all of these. And so now we have a very basic representation of what our animation may look like. And if we were to refine this a little bit more, maybe put a little bit more detail in it, we could use this as a guide as we're animating and literally put this in the composition in After Effects as we are moving all of these pieces around so that we have something to follow through. And so if we really considered the pacing of things, the easing of things in our storyboard, we can start using this as a guide to help us make things happen. Again, this process is really for your eyes only as a designer and animator to help you problem solve quicker. And so it is up to you whenever your sketch is done or good to then start diving into After Effects. So a great question to ask yourself is, is everything in the design accounted for and how it's going to move and respond to the interaction from the user? And do we have a strong reason why that's happening? And those sorts of things. And if you feel like you figured that out through your uh, animatic and through your sketching, then awesome. Like start diving into After Effects and really just make that motion as clear and as good as you possibly can. So that is it. We dove into how to problem solve with motion through sketching. We talked about great ways to annotate your designs before diving in how to use storyboarding to start really thinking about the intricacies of how are things moving and responding to one another, and then taking that storyboard into After Effects to make a quick little animatic to see your sketches in motion. And that's it, everybody. Catch you next time.